Hey there everyone, it's Miss Bell here again from the Science Lab and we are going to be talking about minerals. Now what are minerals? Basically, they're just solid substances that are found naturally in the Earth's surface or underground. They are inorganic, which means that they don't come from plants or animals, and they occur naturally, and that just means that they're not man-made. These are the six minerals we're going to be testing today. First we have talc, and then gypsum, calcite, fluorite, pyrite, and then lastly we have quartz. And with these six different minerals, we're going to be testing their hardness, luster, streak, along with the color of the minerals, transparency, like how much light we're able to see through it. When we're testing the luster of a mineral, that basically just means the way that the light um, reflects off of the outside of the mineral. Sometimes it might have a shiny metallic look to it and other times it might have more of a dull non-metallic look to it. So we're either going with sh metallic, which is shiny, or non-metallic, which is kind of dull. However, when you get to non-metallic classification, um, there are different ways to classify. Is it earthy? Is it resinous? Is it waxy? Does it look like glass or is it kind of pearly? So there are different ways to describe non-metallic or low or no luster. Here we have talc and I'm going to shine my light on it. I would not say that it has a metallic or shiny luster. However, there is some reflection so I would kind of say this has more of a pearly, non-metallic, almost dull luster. And here is our sample of gypsum, and we're testing the luster, so I'm going to shine my light a little on it. This is kind of hard to see since it's white in color, but it does not give a shiny metallic luster. Instead, it's more of a silky type non-metallic dull. Here's our example of calcite. And it's not metallic. However, there is um, kind of that dull, I would say glassy type look to it. Right? Here's fluorite when the light reflects off of it, it gives more of a glassy look to it. Here's pyrite, and I wanted to grab my hand lens just to get an even closer look, and I want you to see that those little specks right there, we would call that metallic because it looks like metal. And here is quartz, so okay, that's non-metallic, However, I would classify that as more of a glassy look to it. When you test the hardness of a mineral, basically you're just going to be scratching the mineral or using the mineral to scratch an object to see what kind of resistance there is. Um, different objects that we use to test hardness are either our fingernails a copper penny, a nail. We also can use a steel file even though I don't have one in the science lab or we can use glass as long as we're careful. But when we look at hardness we go off of a scale called the Mohs hardness scale and it starts at one being the softest minerals and it goes to 10 sometimes even 12 depending on the chart you're looking at with 10 or a diamond um, being the hardest mineral. Okay, so with testing hardness, I have my talc, and I'm just gonna start with my finger now. See if I can. As you can see, I'm very easily scratching my fingernail, and there's already like a powder coming off on my nail. So this is definitely easily scratched 
by a fingernail. So with talc, I would put that at a hardness level of one. With gypsum, I'm gonna try my fingernail as well. And I can definitely see a line being made. In fact, I have kind of that powder residue on my finger from the mineral. So it wasn't as easily, I wasn't able to scratch it as easily as the talc. So I would kind of put this at a, a number two. And here's my piece of calcite. I'm actually going to start with a penny with scratching for hardness. So I'm just going to try my best to add a little bit of pressure with my penny. And as soon as I'm able to make a scratch, like right there, I know that it would be a number two for hardness. Here is fluorite, and I'm going to jump to a nail and see if I can scratch it with the nail. So I was able to scratch it with the nail, so that would mean that it is a level 4 hardness. Okay, when testing pyrites, remember I don't have a steel file in the science lab, so I'm going to go one down and try with a nail. Now let's see if it can be scratched easily. And the nail is leaving no scratches whatsoever. So I'm going to try a piece of glass and I'm going to see if pyrite can even scratch glass. It barely, barely leaves a mark. So um, because it can't be scratched by a nail and because it's barely, barely making a scratch in the glass, I would put pyrite at a six. And here we have quartz, and I'm going to go ahead and try scratching it on the glass, and we'll see. As you can see, that is a big scratch. I'm not having to press down as hard as I did with the pyrite. But because it leaves marks in glass, we would put that at a level of 7 for hardness. When testing a mineral's streak, you're going to be taking the mineral and dragging it across a tile. And then you're going to be looking at that powder and that's going to give you some clues as to figuring out what type of mineral it is. Um, when we do test for a mineral streak, the tile that you need to use needs to be white and preferably non-glossy and it can be made out of porcelain ceramic but you just drag the mineral across there's going to be a powder left over you look at the color of the powder and that tells a minerals true color but in powder form and it might look different than what the mineral actually looks like if you're looking at it straight on. You're also going to need some sort of rag or towel because after each use with the tile you need to clean it off and start fresh for the next mineral that you test. When testing the streak of talc, you just simply drag that mineral right across and as you can see that powder left over on the scratching plate is a white color. We have gypsum so again just dragging that mineral across the streak plate and looking at the color of the powder left over so I would say gypsum has a white streak and here we have calcite and seeing what kind of powder is left over and that's white in color so we would say calcite has a white colored streak. With our fluorite I'm going to go ahead and start scratching the mineral. The leftover 
powder with the light reflection, you can see that it leaves a white colored powder. Here's our pyrite. And, oh, so the other three are white in color, but this leaves a very dark color. Um, I would say that's more of the black. And lastly, we have our quartz. So just taking that mineral, sliding it across. Uh-oh, I don't see anything. So let me try my other piece. And there is no sort of powder or residue left over. So I would say that quartz has no streak. When looking at either the color or transparency of a mineral, you're going to be using the sense of sight. Now with color, that's just the outside coating of the mineral. So let's say it looks red or pink or like a goldish yellow. That would be considered the color. However, when you're talking about transparency, you're going to hold up the mineral to the light, whatever light source you use, and you're going to see if any light can be seen through the mineral. If you can see light through the mineral, we would call that transparent. However, if only some light um, comes through, we would call that translucent. And then if no light whatsoever, it's completely, um, you can't see anything, we would call that opaque. Um, talc over here is kind of a white or gray. Gypsum, I would say, is more of a white color. Calcite is white as well. Fluorite down here is more of a, uh, I would say, green or aqua color. Pyrite down here, it kind of has a wide range of color, but I would say more of like a brass yellow in some places, like this one. And this is mixed with a lot of gray. So brass yellow or with gray. And then quartz, it's kind of clear, but kind of white. So I would say a clear white. Okay, so I have all six of my minerals on a clear petri dish, and we are looking at transparency. We're trying to see if or any light is able to be seen through the minerals. Some, like the fluorite, you can see the light completely coming through. We would call that transparent. And some, you can see exactly no light coming through, like the pyrite. We would call that opaque. No light is coming through that mineral. However, there's others that differ. Some light is coming through some parts, like maybe in the corners where they're thinner. Fluorite was a definite transparent. We could definitely see light coming through the mineral. However, on the opposite end, we have pyrite, in which no light was able to shine through this mineral. Gypsum, calcite, and quartz, I would put as translucent because some light was able to shine through those minerals, maybe on the corners or the thinner pieces. And talc, um, I would actually kind of put in between translucent to opaque um, because some talc pieces you might be able to see a little light and then others you might not be able to see any. And voila! Here are our results after testing the luster, hardness, streak, color and transparency of our six minerals.